Welcome back to another episode of Live from My Parents' Basement. This week I sat down with two of my good friends, Wyatt McIntosh and Isaac Combs, to discuss the NBA playoffs. Gosh, I had to burp. I'm sorry. I had burgers tonight. Anyway, we had a really good time talking about it. Uh, we got in-depth. We got very emotional <laughs> talking about this stuff because it's stupid. But uh, we have a good time listening to it. Thanks. Here tonight with my cousin Wyatt McIntosh, an honorary family member of both our clans, Isaac Combs. Tonight we're going to talk about tonight we're going to talk about our uh, NBA NBA playoff picks. <clears throat> Playing finishes up tonight with the uh, who's the Warriors play? The uh, Grizzlies. Grizzlies. So uh, yeah, we've all filled out a bracket in our heads at least for some, uh-huh. and so we're going to go through round by round, <coughs> see who we got for each game. So. We'll just count the plan as what it is. Golden okay. State will probably win. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so with Golden State winning tonight, they will be the eighth seed. Lakers are seventh seed. Wizards are eighth seed. Celtics are seventh seed. So, we want to stop or start in the Western Conference with the, yeah the first seed of game. So if the Jazz are playing the Golden State Warriors, who you guys got in the first game? Uh, I got the Jazz in five. Uh, Jazz in six. I'm probably just gonna say sweep. Yeah. I don't. I didn't think about that far ahead. Yeah. Um. In general, who do you guys like from each conference? Uh, I think the Lakers are going to win. Okay. I mean, that's that's my pick. I think LeBron and Anthony Davis are just too good together. Yeah, I think we'll finally see a Lakers Clippers Western Conference um, uh, championship. And after watching like the Lakers and Warriors, especially in the second half, like they kind of clicked in that second half. I'm like, yeah, it's it's over. I think Lakers are going to repeat. Okay. I um. I, I, well, I, if it was the beginning of the season, I would say Lakers. It's just I know they've had issues with injuries this year, and whenever LeBron and Anthony Davis went down, that hurt them a lot. And I know they're healthy now, but it just concerns me if those injuries will carry over at all. And it's not like they're playing – it's not like they're a one seed playing mm-hmm. worse teams. They're playing the Suns. Yeah. Even though I have the, I actually have the Lakers winning the first round. I have the Lakers upsetting yeah. the Suns in the first round. Uh, but, yeah. And then – Eastern Conference, how you guys feeling? Uh, it's a toss up for me. I think I think the Nets are gonna win probably, but the Sixers also have a pretty good shot. And uh, my dark horse is the Wizards. Um, <laughs> you know, I think Russ has got something in him. Yeah. 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 Um, I think East is a bit tricky, especially those like three through like six, seven seeds. But I would say Nets, especially with Harden, Katie, and Kyrie all being. Uh, back together, so. And do you guys uh, think that since they just have the historically good offense, that's going to make up for their god awful defense? Uh, yeah, probably. I think they'll at least make the finals, but they could be out in the second round, honestly, because I just don't know how they're going to handle the late game situations because they can do it in the regular season, but in the postseason, it's a lot different. For the first round matchup between the Nuggets and the Blazers, who do you guys have winning winning that series? Uh, I have the Nuggets. I mean, they've got the likely MVP Jokic, and then Jamal Murray's pretty good too. They just have a really good overall team. Well, Jamal Murray's out. Oh yeah, Jamal yeah he tore his ACL. That, yeah. He tore his ACL. Um, yeah, I I like the Nuggets as well. I have my conference finals for the Western Conference is the Jazz versus the Nuggets. Uh, I think the Nuggets will beat the Lakers in the second round. So my, I guess my you, my my final four for the Western Conference are the Jazz, Clippers, Nuggets, and Lakers. Mm-hmm. And who do you guys – is that about what you have? Um, I have – for the Conference Finals, I actually have the Mavericks versus the Lakers. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think Dallas, they were, they were pretty good last year. They got the Clippers wrong true. Money. I think they're going to take the next step this season. Um, Luka, he just keeps getting better and better. He's already a top three player in my opinion. And – I think Porzingis is really going to play well this postseason. He's had a better year than I think people have given him credit for. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was kind of bad at the start of the season, huh. um, but he's gotten a lot better, and he helps them a lot. Like, he was giving the Clippers a lot of problems before he got hurt last year in the playoffs. I think the only issue with Porzingis is he's not very strong. Yeah. He needs to be put on muscle. Mm-hmm. He can get fat. He's, even not on his he's just not very durable. Yeah. When he's playing, he's really tough. If he's in those 35 foot threes, then you're going to be in trouble. Uh, I like how you said you want your Wizards of the Dark Horse. I'd love if they somehow could beat the Sixers. Because, I mean, their offense has been – they won't. But, I mean, their offense has been so crazy. When you have arguably, besides Curry, arguably the best scorer in the league, 
or pretty much just Carmelo two point oh and yeah. Bradley Beal. Yeah, uh-huh. I mean he is. Yeah, he could. Yeah. Shoot. I mean Carmelo was the purest scorer for yeah. most of his career. Beal's been kind of struggling though, because like he's he's had that hamstring injury, so like he's been pretty inefficient since he's come back. But, like, him and Russ, Russ will have the average triple-double, which he can do, and Bill will have the average over 30, yeah. I think, for them to make any noise. Yeah. Uh, I read some – I don't – did you guys see that thing where um, Shaq and Chuck were talking – Charles Barkley were talking about um, defensive strategies for the Sixers? I didn't see that. Um, Shaq actually gave a good point. Chuck said you just have to take the ball away from Embiid and make Simmons shoot it, but then they pointed out well, Simmons can't shoot, but he can just – you can just get foul shots and drive. He can dunk on people. Post up, you know. Shaq said, no, you let Embiid score. You make sure no one else scores who on the floor. You yeah. lock down everyone else mm-hmm. and make sure, and you make Embiid have to carry that team. Because because they pointed out how, he pointed out how, you know, if you try to lock down Embiid, that just opens up Seth Curry, yeah. Danny Green, Tobias Harris, uh, I think his name's Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, he put his, okay, him, uh, Shake Milton, even Simmons. So they said, you know, you focus, you put your five guy, four other guys locking them down, mm-hmm. and you make Embiid have to carry yeah. them, yeah. which I thought was an interesting way to do it. I just don't think the Sixers can win until they get an actual point guard because I think they need to play Ben Simmons at power forward or trade him. Because Absolutely. I agree. They just yes. can't stretch the floor, and in the playoffs yeah. it just doesn't work, half court offense. Yeah, I don't like the Sixers at all. Plus, with Embiid, if you – do that strategy. If you overwork him, he's not going to handle it because of his load management. Minutes. Yeah, and yeah. He's, he's just a fragile player in terms of injuries. Mm-hmm. So I think he'll fold. He, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's always been hurt ever since he came in the league. So that's true. I think out of the West, uh, I have the Clippers beating the Mavericks in the first round. Yeah. I, they've clicked all season. Mm-hmm. Like Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are both playing at all NBA levels. Like Paul George, I know his shooting. Shooting numbers are incredibly efficient. Like he's yeah. had an outstanding year. Isaac, I want you to hear that. Um, I respect Paul George's game, but he is a snake who told a bunch of lies about Indiana and then left. I'm all right with him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always liked Paul George. He's always been one of my favorite players. Um, he was great in Oklahoma City for the season that he played there. But I, and, and also told me he'd he'd stay, but you know, he goes and hops trains to another team. He, hey, he's hey, a bit of a snake. He did, he's he, a bit of a liar, but yes. I respect his Hey, game. better than Oladipo. Can we agree with that? This is true. Well, you should yes, have, yes. Obviously, yeah. obviously. I'm Victor, and you don't even talk to me about that guy. <laughs> it, it's all valid points with Paul George. It's just in my lifetime, he's the smoothest player. Yeah, he's he's so smooth. just he's it's just effortless watching. If you play with that man on 2K, you like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No crap. Um, you know, I could get Oladipo. He was saying like how every team I've played on has given up on me. You were asking Heat and Knicks <laughs> players, what can I play with you guys in front of yeah. your teammates? You're just a jerk. Like, just, you're not yeah, like you're at. You're demanding superstar money yeah. with one good year. Paul George had a few good years, major injury, then came back and was even better. That's the difference between you yeah. two. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. I think I'm actually going to change my pick in the East of the Heat, actually, because I think they're the team that could actually beat the Nets if they click. I have the Heat beating the Bucks in the first round. Yeah, I think they will. For yeah. sure. That was a pick I struggled with. Like, I love Butler, one of my favorite players, but for some reason I like the Bucks this year, so I'm going Bucks in the first round. Drew Holiday has helped them tremendously. Yeah, he does help. And he's probably the most underrated player in the league. When it's it's just funny. I always talk about this. It's just people, players in the league, consistently say he's the best defender in the league. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that he never gets any consi- You know, one All Star game. Mm-hmm. I think one All Defensive, and that's it. But he'd have been clicking lately. I just think the Heat's mentality and their system works. I think Heat will take Bucks in the first round. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. I as, think as they're all got, Jimmy's healthy. I mean, one of the only players that can stop Giannis is Bam. I don't. See, I think he'll shut him down. And Jimmy Butler's probably having the best season of his career. He's averaging twenty-two, seven and seven. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think. I think. I mean, they lost to Olenek because it, it was pretty much a loss because you get Olenek was a pretty solid player, and you try to get All Depot. Now he can't play, so I guess that's the only major loss is losing yeah, yeah. Olenek. I mean, Jimmy Butler, in a way, is kind of like Westbrook because he goes all out every game, but he actually helps his team win. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, so like he's, he's the only, winning version yeah, of Westbrook. Yeah, he's like, he is. Their play styles are always different, but they just play so hard every game. Yeah, that's my big upset. I have the Heat beating Milwaukee, yeah. and then I it's the Heat and Nets round. You talked about that. Mm-hmm. I have the Nets winning because I think 
since all three of them are healthy and you have James Harden, one of the best playmakers of all time, uh, Kevin Durant, top three, four scorers of all time, then Kyrie Irving, the best ball handler ever. Yeah. Just a hand, just craft, one of the craftiest players. You joined the 50 40 90 club this year. Did you guys know that? I did not know that. 50% field goal, 40% uh, or above, uh, three point percentage, 90% free throw. It's really incredible. Yeah. I think that's the main reason Steve Nash won his MVPs, but whatever. Yeah. I'll not get into that. Uh, I don't like um, – Steve Nash is good, but it's like we talked earlier. Yeah. Bit overrated. Over, bit over, a bit overrated. Um, yeah, like Jimmy Butler, like Isaac was saying, he's my favorite player. I've never seen a player – besides LeBron in the 2016 finals. I've never seen a player just carry an entire team on your back mm-hmm. in the finals. And, and it was pointed out last year that he took the Lakers to six games. I mean, um, pushed them to six games. And he had, like, two triple doubles, two 30-plus-point 30 30 triple doubles, all while guarding LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> arguably, arguably, one, arguably the greatest player of all time. Um, it's incredible. Like, uh, the, yeah. there's never – and they pointed out there's never been a matchup to where in the finals – he hasn't really had the best player guard him, yeah. and he's guarding them. Like, there's been Dirk Nowitzki and Curry, and I guess Tim Duncan, but they're not guarding him during the game. So that's and, what's even more impressive about it. And Drogic, their consistent second, second option got hurt in the finals. Yeah, it's and, true. And so. Bam as well. He just had to take on so much more in scoring load. In addition he did. To so much harder defense. <laughs> I like yeah. he says he hates dunking. He doesn't like dunking. <laughs> <laughs> and there's pictures of him uh, driving a Toyota Sienna. He yeah. likes driving a minivan. He's a good guy. He's got the big face coffee business. Big face. He says he's upping. He says the first round he's upping the price to twenty five dollars just because they're in Milwaukee. Yeah, they can afford it. He says he's well. charging more, which I like. I respect it. So, okay, so I'm trying to think. So, what are you guys' final finals matchups then? Uh, I think I've got Lakers versus Heat again, honestly. You're going to do it? <laughs> All right. Dang, Wyatt, okay. Uh, I'd love that. Yeah, I mean, great. I just think the Nets, it's their first year together. They're all, they're really they're really playing well, but I just think in the playoffs, they have that finals experience. They made it to the final last year, and I just think that they're going to be able to put yeah. the pressure on the Nets. And in late game situations, they're not going to know who to get the ball to. I just I just think they need a year to figure it out. Yeah, I am I got Lakers from the West, and I did have Nets, but... I'm going to change it to the Bucks. <laughs> oh, no, no. Dude, 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 don't do it. I think this is don't the year for the, the Bucks. Kool-Aid. I think this is the year <laughs> no, for, no, for no. the Bucks to at least make the finals. I think they'll lose in five or six games. I said all, I said all of last year, the Bucks will not make the finals. And what happened? I mean, they don't make the finals. What seed are the Bucks this year? Three. Three. They were, they were one last year, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, and they didn't do anything. <laughs> Dude, I, know, I know. I know. I know. I know. It's it's a hot take, but also along with hot takes, I have Blazers being Nuggets in first round in seven games. See, that's the one. That's, that's a. That's a toss. Yeah. I was gonna talk. That's yeah. why I asked really like Nuggets and Blazers. Um, like I guess besides like besides the Pacers. Oh, also, thank you, Isaac, because I have my yeah, boy on Bogdanovich jersey on. Isaac's mm-hmm. lent to me to wear for this. They're my favorite team, and I love Bogdanovich, but uh. Besides the Pacers, the Heat are my favorite team, and I'd, I'd love to see them win the finals. But I think, if I'm being realistic, the team I'd want to win the finals is the Nuggets. Yeah. I love Jokic. He's he's top three, top four best players in the league. Top five for sure, if not three or four. But um, I'd really like to see the Nuggets win. I don't think they will. But, I mean, there's... A, there's a chance Damian Lillard would beat them in the first yeah. round. I mean, he he did that one year where he carried the Blazers to the conference finals and beat them. So well, it's like I told you earlier this year. I texted Isaac. I was like, Damian Lillard really is a mm-hmm. bastard for having the Blazers at the fifth seed without <laughs> Nurkic and oh, Nicole. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. it just carries them to the it's fifth incredible. seed in the Western Conference, which is amazing. Yeah. I love watching the Nuggets play, but. And I would like it if they won too, but I just don't think they have the defense or the physicality to win the championship. Well, I know Aaron, like, they got Aaron Gordon, and he slotted in perfectly. Yeah, but I think he fit in so well. He, I think he's been pretty inconsistent lately, but uh, I think really, if they had Murray, I'd probably have yeah. them go to the finals. Order. Murray's, I think in the regular season, you see a lot of teams get away with having some key players out. Yeah. But I think in the playoffs is when it really catches up to you. I think neither Murray is that playmaker at. Handling the ball is going to hurt him a lot. 
I agree. The I Nuggets really, they just need like an enforcer down low, I feel like. Because Jokic is more of a, he's a finesse player. And they just need, mm-hmm. they just need a big guy to get all the rebounds and defend really well, defend the paint really well. No. Um, so just, Isaac, you said Lakers and Bucks. That was yours, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have, my finals matchup is Jazz versus Nets. Okay. I, I'm trying to figure out, here's the thing. I think Heat will beat but Milwaukee. I'm pretty confident mm-hmm. about that. If the Heat beat the Nets, I think the Heat would beat the Sixers. Yeah. So I guess literally if the Heat were able to beat the Nets, I think the Heat would be in the finals. I think I'd still – I just think the Jazz is a complete team. They are. Because yeah. they're both top ten in, a, in defense and offense, I think rating or whatever that is. They just got so many weapons. Like they, they got they got Clarkson and Ingles both going to be sixth man of the year candidates. I would probably say Ingles should win it, but I think he started like 30-some games, so that's not yeah. really fair. But uh, Mike Conley's finally good. Mm-hmm. They get Donovan Mitchell back healthy, and he's playing yeah. well. The thing, yeah, the thing is, if Mitchell can get into his groove, because oh, he's playing missed more than 10 games, I would think. Like in the past couple weeks at least? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's missed a decent amount. So if they can get back to where he was, then the Jazz could be a threat. But I don't know. They just like that. Superstar. I don't think Mitchell is a superstar. Yeah. True. That's what, that's what so, I think. I just don't think yeah. your best player can be Donovan Mitchell on a finals team. Mm-hmm. I, he, I agree with that. I just think they have so many. They just have so many good play. They have six, six or seven or even eight solid. I mean, not even that good to great players. That's just like they got Derek Favors yeah. back. He's a great, great big. Rudy Gobert is the best defensive center in the league. He'll probably win defensive player. Probably rightfully so. The three hundred million dollar man, or whatever, uh, two hundred million dollar man. Um, but uh, I don't. I like. I don't know. I like the Jazz. Uh, yeah, because my fi- my f- conference finals is Jazz Nuggets in the Eastern Conference Finals. I have set uh, Nets and Sixers. Oh, here we go. We haven't talked about this yet. So, what about the Knicks and Hawks? That'll yeah. that might be the most entertaining series because yeah. no one's expecting him to win the finals. It's yeah. more like who's going to win this series. Yeah. It's it's a really irrelevant series, but I'm really looking forward <laughs> I to. Am it. Too. Yeah. I am too. I am too. I'm rooting for the Knicks solely because of Julius Randle. Because when Lonzo came into the league, he was on the, he was on the baby Lakers with Ingram and Randall and Clarkson and all of them. And mm-hmm. I've watched Randall ever since then, and I've always thought he was pretty good. So I'm really glad to see him have some success. I'd like yeah. to see the Knicks win, but I think the Hawks will win that series. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Hawks just have a better team. I'm, yeah. re- I'm rooting for the Hawks because of <laughs> my favorite coach in the NBA, <laughs> Nate McMillan. <laughs> who the Pacers should have never fired. Oh, yeah. McMillan, slightly, <laughs> you know, slightly I, above average. I coach. can't. Isaac always brings up these facts about like these, like I guess evidence of Nate McMillan being a good coach, and it's, oh, I, I can't argue with it because he's like. He took a worse team, Pacers team last year, and they were the fourth seed with more in- – well, actually, less injuries now. But um, then he goes to the Hawks. They're terrible. And now they're the – what is it, fourth, fifth seed in the yeah. East? They also did get some pretty good additions. They got Bogdanovich, and they got um, Clint Capella to hold down the middle. So they had some pretty good additions. Did, did, did Chris Dunn play at all this year? I don't know. I didn't follow him. He just enough. disappeared, I think. Yeah, I mean, he was good in college, <laughs> but he just can't score. So. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just too – He's just, he's, he's too passive. He, he he's, just, he's just not NBA. Yeah. He's yeah. Just, yeah. Let's see what I like how the Knicks start about. Alfred Payton as their point guard. <laughs> yeah. Why are you starting Derek? Well, they got quickly in Derek Rose. Why yeah. is he playing? Alfred Payton. Yeah. Alfred Payton fan club. God. Uh, and Tom Thibodeau should get coach of the year, but. He won't. I think Monty Williams will win. Yeah. I'm agree with you. I think it should be Thibodeau. Yeah, I think it should be the team that exceeds expectations. Yeah. Like, I, people really, I know, I guess the, the, the Suns, uh, I see Williams winning, but I, nobody saw the Knicks even making the playoffs. Well, that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. It's like they had Booker. They had yeah. Chris Paul. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. like... They'll, they'll be a playoff team, like at the least. But no one's like Nick, Knicks won't make playoffs, and they're yeah. and they're a, a, a four seed. Is that what they are? Or, or five? Four, I think they're yeah. a four seed. And he'll win most player. He should make an all NBA team. Julius Randle yeah, I mean, should. The other day I was watching the next game. Julius Randle just pulls up three straight times on the break for three and just nails it. And I'm just yeah. like, I can get behind. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think he, okay. just got, he just got better. I'll buy yeah. He just got better. He's always player. been like a good post score and he's just expanded his game so much. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's good. Thought, wait, so who did you guys say you want to win it then? Not saying who you think will win. Who did, did you, have you guys said who you like want to win it then? Like the whole thing. Like who? Like who would you be rooting for? It doesn't like I know you guys said you have the Lakers winning, but do you, is that who you're rooting for as well? 
I mean, I'm rooting for the Wizards, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, it's it's the Suns. I, I love Chris Paul, so That's what I figured, yeah. No, I'm hoping the Lakers win actually because I mean I've always liked the Lakers. That's yeah, what, and I, I think also too on that note, if if the Lakers win, it just cements that LeBron's the best player of all time. Like you, you can't take away a guy as a seven seed winning it, win the playoffs. Are they a legitimate seven seed? <laughs> but the thing they were but, injured the whole season. They are, but but to play on the road in every single game. The, yeah, the thing is with that, nice. if they beat the Suns. They still would have the same advantage the Suns have going into the next round then. Yeah. So they might as well be the second seed. That would be the argument for that. Are you sure? Well, no, I think no, because the, the lower seed always has. Yeah. Lower seed always has home court advantage. No, well, no, besides, no, the seed always has. Well, yeah, yeah, bes- besides yeah. that, I don't yeah. know. Besides that, of course. I mean, the Pacers, they'd love that. They can't win at home ever. No, we're getting so what do they care? It doesn't matter. We're getting the Lakers versus Warriors conference finals. The Lakers will have home field oh, That'd be sweet. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. Dude. Oh. <laughs> I like how the Celtics are just shit. Yeah. <laughs> just know what they're like. It's who amazing. cares? <laughs> just like who cares about the Celtics? Again, that was my prediction this year. I'm like, Celtics will not be as good because people forget how good Hayward was for them. And people like to toss Hayward aside. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't good. He's injury prone. Look, look at his numbers with the Hornets, and look how crap the Celtics were. Yeah. Kimba Walker is washed. <laughs> he's so bad. He's <laughs> washed. He's scored like ten points on three for yeah. fourteen. It's no, sad when Tatum has to score fifty for your team to barely win. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, that's, that's uh, horrible. You also don't have Jalen Brown as well, which sucks. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and say, I think at the beginning of the year, I had the Celtics being the number one seed in the conference. <laughs> that was my prediction, and now they're the seventh seed, so that's how Crazy it went for me. <laughs> that was just bad. Oh, man. Uh, what else can we talk about with this? So, see, we've talked about the Jazz. Jazz will beat the Warriors, most likely. Did you guys see how Draymond's a finalist for defensive player? I did not see that. I'm all right with that. He was kind of locking up AD the other night, and he's kind of getting into it with them. He's a smart he's player, good, man. He's smart. Like he, I hate watching like like a team play against him. But like if he was like on my team, I'm like yeah, I love this guy. But I do you like when he has a night of like two fifteen and sixteen. <laughs> Those are the best nights. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dude, I, me and Isaac like just stupid stuff. It's yeah. like not. It's uh, like just not scoring, but then having like fifteen boards. <laughs> it's kind of sweet. Yeah, it's like you can't lie. one for three for two points, like eight assists, twelve rebounds, <laughs> stupid crap. Like that. I think he averaged uh, nine, seven, and nine this year. Yeah. yeah, it's just like in the first half against the Pacers, the other day, Westbrook had like eight points and thirteen rebounds. <laughs> yeah. He almost had a triple double in the first half. Uh, Pacers for you. Okay, uh, Clippers and Ma- we haven't talked about the Clippers much. So you think the Mavericks will beat the Clippers in the first round? I do, but I think whoever wins that that series is going to the conference finals for sure. Do so you think they'll beat? The- oh, see, I'm a jazz. I'm high I, on the I jazz. Know, I know you're, you're high on the jazz. I'm high on the jazz. I'm really high on the Mavericks. And, I mean, I obviously love Luca. Yeah. So, um, but I think whoever wins that series is going to the conference. I mean, finals. they got Willie Cauley Stein. They have Bobon. They got Bobon. They have Trey Burke. I think. I think <laughs> they I think, got Trey Burke. Yeah. yeah. I think the Mavs Clippers series is probably the one I'm most excited for. The first round is like it's, it's yeah, it's round two. It's but. just because they, yeah they played last year and it was a really good series. Yeah. Like looking at the Western Conference, it's gonna be a do- maybe besides the Jazz and Warriors because I think the Jazz will. Yeah. Oh, Curry's I mean, gonna have just to. Have enough. They're freaking yeah. Kelly Oubre. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, besides that. Clippers, Mavs, either way. Nuggets, Blazers, either either way. Suns, Lakers. Yeah. Most of these matchups are really close. Yeah. So if like I like here, we both have well, you have the Blazers being the Nuggets, but it's like for me, if I had the Blazers playing the Suns in the second round, I have no idea who would win that series. Yeah. Like I don't want mm-hmm. I'd almost take the Blazers, and then the Blazers are in the conference finals if they win yeah. that. Um Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's so odd how one series can determine the rest of the conference. Like mm-hmm. you said, whoever wins the Clippers and Mavs are going to the conference finals. Yeah. It's like if I had the, if I have the Heat beating the Nets, I think they might, they could yeah. possibly win the finals if they just beat the Nets. Um, I mean, I just feel strongly because I really think Dallas would have beaten the Clippers if Kristaps was yeah. healthy last year. So I just think they're going to win. Yeah. I think they were my dark horse guy to go to the finals oh, last yeah, year. The Mavs are a sneaky team if yeah. Kristaps stays healthy. I mean, they had, they had the Clippers on the ropes, and then Porzingis got hurt, and that just, they just got killed after that. But <laughs> I'm glad yeah. we all agree that the Sixers aren't a, aren't a oh, contender. Yeah. They're just not. You can't have, you can't have a non-shooter. You can't have somebody yeah. who can't score outside the paint as your point guard. You yeah. just can't. You can't. Yeah, I, I'm glad. Danny Green's washed. 
Like, Ben Simmons scored two points in a playoff game. Because That's good. It's half court offense, and he can't play half court offense. Well, he yeah. said, well, well um, he's just transition guy. Yeah. <laughs> but he's really good at what he does in the regular yeah. season, but. The playoff comes. You gotta go shoot outside of eight feet. Well, K- Kitty Smith made a good point. He's like, I was an okay scorer. I wasn't great, but he's like, if I if Ben Simmons was guarding me and he's seven foot tall, I'd feel fine because I can just get around him. He's like, you're not the best defender in the league. I could score on you. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's like, you're he's like you're six inches taller than me. I can just get around you. Yeah. He's yeah. like, I'm, it's no issue for me. So they were talking about the Wizards and the Sixers. He's like, you have Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook coming at you. I don't think you're gonna be. He's like. Yeah. You can maybe guard guys in the post. I don't think you're going to stop Bradley Beal from scoring. Uh, you're not. <laughs> you yeah. If Ben Simmons dropped 25 percent from three, I might have the Sixers as my finals. But don't even attempt. Yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't even try. try. If he even tried it at all, but they can just like stand back ten feet off of him. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like if you're not a good. Sh- it's like if you're a big man. Literally shooting 25 percent is enough. Yeah. You just got to hit. You got to yeah. be somewhat. It's like Sabonis. Yeah. I think Sabonis actually shot like 38% this year. Or it, it wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't but, bad for a big guy. But if he shot 30, if who cares? He, if he played power forward, he'd be Draymond Green on steroids. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he's just in the wrong position. Hey, Lance yeah. Stevenson would have been Draymond Green. He's stupid. <laughs> Lance yeah. Stevenson's better than Draymond Green. Come on now. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite Pacers player of all time is Lance Stevenson. Lance Stevenson on the Lakers. Yes. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. I just remember. LeBron <laughs> sought him out. Uh, yeah. He I just remember him. like Lonzo throwing him a lot off the backboard and Lance like just bobbling in midair and stuff. <laughs> it was amazing. I was against the Suns. I remember watching that like one in the morning on a school night. <laughs> I'm just pissed. I'm just pissed he had to go play in China the year they won a title. Yeah, he should have just, just, just re-signed Dude, him. Dude, they had the goose him and Michael Beasley. Yeah, <laughs> like, did Michael Beasley play for that team? Yeah, he's on the <laughs> Michael, I forget who else they had. They had one more. Um... I can't remember who it was, but I know Michael Beasley. Matt Barnes, year, so. not Matt Barnes. Uh, the dumbass that always the dumbass that always talks trash and he's terrible. Uh, Javale McGee. Javale no, McGee. no, no, not Javale no. McGee. He, he, Javale him. McGee has adds value. He does, he, but they had him and Lance and Michael Beasley. Oh, it was. Uh, he's played for. Jared Dudley. Yeah, but he's still on the team, <laughs> Stupid man. Stupid idiot. He's, play, he's yeah. just like out there talking trash. Like, you average half a point a game. Yeah. Shut up. All Jared Dudley does tired. is get in fights with guys on Twitter who say they could beat him on one on one. Dudley. Yeah, I'm thinking of Jared Dudley. His last name explains him. Dudley. <laughs> hey, he's been in the league for like 18 years. Gotta give him some pride. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, he served his purpose. Do you guys see how, like, Marv Albert's retiring after this season? Yeah. I guess, like, um, I, f- I saw it on Reddit. It's like when he talks into the mic, he's just too old to realize what's going on. So you just hear him sit and go like, like that <laughs> to the mic all game. So I think they just told him like, yeah, we're just firing yeah, you. Yeah, dude, I can honestly <laughs> kind of tell. Like when I was watching, he was doing the call. Like, I could just kind of tell. He just felt like a step, like a step behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you just kind of tell like this guy. I'm just waiting for him to throw bad Bill Walton to the NBA oh podcast. God. I think I'd stop watching NBA if Bill Walton's calling NBA games. I want the Hornets announcers to be in the playoff games. Chris, Chris Webber got fired from TNT. Because he's sta- he just stale as hell. He doesn't add anything to it. He's just boring. The thing is, I like Chris Webber as a, oh, as a game caller. Dude, I hate I him. I'm all right with Reggie. I'm all right with Reggie. Um, I mean, but no, I'll tell you who I hate is Jeff Van Gundy. Yeah, he's annoying. He's kind, of, he's kind of annoying. Is annoying. that the one? Is that the bald one or the coach? Yeah, he's the bald he, one. He, he's the bald guy who acts just like, acts like that's a, a foul. What, what yeah. is this league? Like, I just don't know what you guys are doing. Like, this is what I would do. I'm like, shut up, Van Gundy. <laughs> shut up. I'm a fan of uh, Quinn the Great Buckner. <laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> don't I, love, Quinn yeah. Buckner. I, I love he's Quinn Buckner. Kristen Harry. But dude, Kristen Harry. he just looks like a great. <laughs> I don't understand why. It's just the roundness of his head. He just looks like a damn great. <laughs> I love him to death. Him and Kristen Harry. He's just a good guy. No, he is a good Buckner, guy. Man. Man. It's hey, rest in peace, Slick Leonard. He died yeah, about a month sad. ago. Our, rest in peace, Slick Leonard. Uh, Mike Breen's okay. He's pretty good. Yeah, he's yeah, pretty good. good. Yeah, he's really good. Um... The guy that's on 2K. Kevin Harlan, I think. Kevin Harlan, yeah. yeah he's yeah. All right. He's got the the golden voice. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's got that announcer voice. Yeah. Mark Jackson. He has like I mean, he's he's got somewhere like like the Chris Webber where like they're kinda like they're 
their their voice is just kind of stale by so like, Mark Jackson. Oh, right, was Mark Jackson. Mark's like really intelligent. Uh, so he was with he was with Van Gundy for the the Lakers and Warriors game. Like I I could just tell Mark was just getting pissed off at Van yeah. Gundy because Van Gundy just wouldn't shut up. Well, Mark Jackson's always pissed because the Warriors started doing good as soon as he was. Yeah, fired. they literally <laughs> like won the finals the year after he got fired. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Kerr just comes in and wins seventy games. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. But here's something interesting. Um. With the way I know the Celtics, um, excuse me, like their offense and their offensive sets mainly just ISO. Mm-hmm. How much blame of the, do you put on Brad Stevens for that? Because a lot of people think he's on the hot seat after. This. I just think Brad Stevens is better at coaching a bad team to be good than a good team to be great. That's a good way. To put it. Uh, that's a good way. Yeah, he he just gets the most out of bad teams, but he doesn't know how to handle a bunch of talent. Because you watch the I Celtics see, offense, yeah. it's a lot like the Pacers, where it's just like. Honestly, the Pacers is better than the Celtics at the end of the day. Pacer, Pacers are good. Yeah. Nate Bjorkren, he's a terrible coach. <laughs> he, he is. He's, yeah. he's, yeah. He's, a, he's an asshole, but he runs a good offense. He, he runs Their offense is night and day better than it was last year. Mm. Runs the worst defense I've seen in my life. Um, yeah, it's atrocious. But it's like you always talk about Jason Tatum. He's terrible shot selection. Mm, yeah. It is. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Jalen Brown sort of gets the short end of the stick there because I think him and Tatum are about as yeah, good. Yeah, there's this. I think Brown. I think Brown brings more than Taylor defensively and is just more efficient than Tatum is. That's how I, I feel. I think he's like he's like a better defender too. I just think he brings a lot more than Taylor because Tatum's gonna go fourteen for twenty nine. Yeah, and Brown Brown will go like eleven for sixteen and have twenty five points. Or something you also like got to take it into account though the defense is focusing on Tatum. Yeah, so That's if true. if the defense is focused on Brown, that Tatum could probably do they, they just have similar they just have similar skill sets. Yeah, and I don't know. I wish Jay, I wish Jalen Brown would grab his flat top again. Yeah, yes. he's like like a yeah. badass with that. He, that was amazing. Yes, I think. Um, the trade line deadline this year is pretty big. I like how the Magic just traded their three best players immediately. Yeah, they literally started the G League roster. Yeah. The oh, actually, yeah. oh, four of them. Vucevic, Fournier, Gordon, Gordon, and... Oh, no, that's it. That's it, actually. Yeah, the, those, those... They just have Cole Anthony and a bunch of guys. Yeah, Cole Anthony's trash. I hate Cole Anthony. <laughs> oh, you know Greg, I, I you know Greg Anthony's his dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Greg Anthony got uh, arrested for uh, soliciting a prostitute once. Oh, that's a good title. We got a good yeah. thing to have on your resume. It's good for I'm glad Cole Anthony knows that about his dad, and yeah. it's on his dad's Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that happens to me one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the guy I picked up in fantasy and I like is Norman Powell. Yeah, I watched mm-hmm. him play. He's solid, dude. He's, yeah, he's like, good. he's like, I love his game because it's so. I don't know. His, his, I love his jumper. His jump shot's great. Yeah, it's so thinking smooth. He's it's on good. the Raptors, right? No, he got traded to the Blazers. Oh, he got traded to the Blazers? That's I didn't thing. even realize yeah. that. See, the yeah. thing is... It's like a sneaky trade. It is, because yeah. he plays a three there now, and you got great score, great score, great score. Damien, I mean, Lillard, McCollum, him. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's good. It's a, Nur- Nurkic yeah. and then, yeah. Nurkic and then Cantor. <laughs> Cantor. Throwing Robert, Robert Covington. Completely off topic, but this just made me think of when Terrence Ross dropped 50 points on the Raptors. <laughs> someone, yeah. said, someone said Terrence Ross is just primed to go be like the sixth man for a championship team. Just he go be, just go be the. He Jer- just goes off at random. Times. Just go be the yeah. Jordan Clarkson for some yeah. team. Warren Mo Williams dropped fifty four on the Timberwolves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the other day Kwame Brown was uh, was saying how he's like talking shit to people. He's like, me and Kobe combined for eighty two. Because <laughs> he yeah. scored one point, and Kobe scored 81. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't touch me. Yeah, I remember seeing those memes like, yeah, Kobe Bryant and Kobe Bryant come on for 82 points, and Kobe scored 81. <laughs> no, and like, yeah. he, was on a li- he was like on a video saying that shit, going like, shut shut up. Like, I, I helped that. <laughs> shut the hell up, guys. I scored 82. <laughs> or, or Kobe and Smush Parker. That was another one. Yeah. Smush Parker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... Let's see. Why you? What did you? You wanted to do an all playoff team? Yeah, just like who we think like the best players in the playoffs are going to be. And this is all rounds, not just like the finals or anything. Yeah, it can just be overall any rounds. You just have a point guard, uh, two guards, two forwards, and a center okay. for your all playoff teams. You can start because I got to think about this. Um, I feel like I'm going to put Lillard in there over Curry because I think he'll go. I think he'll go farther. If I think they have a better chance of advancing. Yeah. And then I'm going to put LeBron in there as one of my forwards. 
and then I'm going to put Jokic as my center. I'll put Luka in there as my two guard, and then I'm going to put Jimmy Butler as my other forward. Shit. <laughs> um, so we got Damian, uh, so we got Lillard, uh, Doncic, LeBron, um, Jokic, and Butler for me. I'm not going to lie. I think that's exactly who I would say. Yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm being serious. I was going through your thing, and I was like, well, I'd probably just put Jimmy Butler. And then you said Jimmy Butler, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's just my scene. Sense. That's my scene. Because he'll go in there and just give his soul to the devil to yeah. win. Because that's, <laughs> yeah. that's how he plays. Yeah. yeah. He's um, right. yeah. He'll yeah. literally sell his soul to the devil to win a playoff For game. Me, he doesn't care. I mean, I have the Nuggets losing the first round, so if I can't put Jokic in there. So, Dame... But not not a single net. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Dame. Come on, screw the nets. <laughs> um, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, Harden. I gotta go Harden. I, actually, yeah, I'm I'm gonna swap out Doncic for Harden for my yeah. for the second guard. I'm sorry, Wyatt. Yeah, I'm leaving. Because <laughs> uh, Wyatt hates Harden. Dame, Harden, LeBron, Giannis, and then I might go with AD for, for my five. I guess he's. He, I guess he's technically a four. Yeah, but I mean, you could put him as both. That's yeah. fair. It's odd with Anthony Davis because he's maybe the most underrated center in the NBA, and he's had a fantastic. Well, I don't want to say most underrated. It's like he's never won Defensive Player ever, yeah. ever. Yeah. How is that even possible? Yeah. I guess he got it. I mean, I guess there was Giannis and Gobert and um, Draymond Green, but it's like you're an incredible defensive yeah, player, right. and you've never won Defensive Player. I feel like he just flies under the radar because he's so quiet. He yeah. is. Yeah. He's. Probably, I mean, besides Embiid and Jokic, he's probably. The, he could be even a better. Do you think he's a better scoring center than both of them guys? I don't think he's better than Embiid, but I think he's. I think he might be a little bit better than Jokic, but it's really tough. But I think Embiid's definitely the best scorer out of those three. Probably most moves, yeah. craftiest. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I think he can shoot the best too. Probably. Yeah. Plus Jokic has a lot more load in his shoulders compared to MP. Look up what he's got around him. And Jokic is a really good scorer, but he's much more of a playmaker than us. I feel like he's a playmaker he is, first. He so. yeah. I love watching the videos breaking down his playmaking. Mm-hmm. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And I can't wait for Sabonis to be the discount Jokic of the East. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's getting... He, 2021, 12 and 7. Like, it's so, <laughs> one of the most consistent oh, yeah, players in the league. Uh, uh, amazing numbers for a big guy. Isaac, he joined... Uh, Oscar Robertson, Wilt Chamberlain, yeah. and Kevin Garnett as the only four, the only four players ever to average at least twenty points, twelve rebounds, and I think six assists. Yeah, so I, yeah I remember seeing that stat. Yeah, that's incredible. People, I don't know why people sleep on Sabonis. Yeah, like he, some people are saying, like he's like one of the worst All Stars ever. I'm like, you guys are starting watching him play. You have yeah. you're saying <laughs> yeah. that? There's people on Twitter that say yeah. it all the time. That's like, just horseshit because he's a white dude. Yeah. yeah. God. Yeah, he's all this guy plays for Indiana. That's my oh, first off, nobody watched the Pacers. Yeah. And this year I wouldn't blame you. They're terrible. Yeah. But Sabonis was great. It's Sabonis just an unstoppable force. <laughs> it's, it's, like, an it's, like, yeah. it's like it's like it's like it's like Hugh said, friend of the show, he's like, I don't know anyone that can stop Sabonis when he gets yeah. in the paint. Yeah. At all. He has the best post moves of the whole yeah. whole NBA. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean there's Embiid. There there's Embiid, Embiid but I I I would just take Sabonis in the I post. I take Sabonis the, the, as a pure you know, post player, pure yeah. post scorer. I think he he's probably yeah. the best. A post scorer, yeah. There was like a stretch this year of like a month where he was just being soft for some reason, and it really pissed me yeah. off. It's like he just do like, like this, and yeah. it's like just, just like throw your shoulder into yeah. like a man. I'm gonna pull up yeah. his stats in the month of May for Sabonis as I screenshot it. <laughs> uh, I like. I think Bam Adebayo is low key gonna have an amazing career. Yeah, he's, I mean he's already really good. He's he, so young because he's just like. He's he's like Jokic and Sabonis, and even like Giannis. He he, develop, he needs to become a little bit better shooter, but he's just ad, more athletic than all of maybe yeah. Matt. No, I almost he's he's almost as athletic as Giannis is because he, he 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 plays like a small forward and he's six. He's what? How tall is he? He's a center. Uh, I think he's like six nine. Okay, he's a, he's, like a, he's an undersized center, but he's just I don't know. He's Maybe great. Yeah. I'm not sure. All right, so the 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 Sabonis stats in the month of May were about 25 points, 15 rebounds, 11 assists on 67 percent field goal shooting, and 50 percent three point. 50 percent three point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, he's probably more, more like 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 four for eight or something like yeah. that. But I mean, that's 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 pretty good for a big guy. Like him, he he hasn't really stretched out his game to like this year. At least the the three point. 
He'll get better. I th- I, 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 I he's think only 25. He'll, <laughs> he'll, he's turned 25. Now, my dad thinks that's his. he's at his, his best he's going to be. I'm like, he's not, gonna, he's not peaked. No, he's not. Like, he'll, his rebound numbers will probably be about the same. Yeah. His assists will be about the same. But I'm like, you know Jokic only averaged like 19 points a game last year. Now yeah. he's averaging 26. I'm like, he could make that jump too. Yeah, it's mean, not hard. He's going to have one of those seasons where he averages like 28 a game or something like that. And if he he's always been a help, literally the only there I, I he has two things that are keeping him from becoming a superstar. Bad injuries, which I you know that's random, and then the other one is you just don't have a breakdown like Roy Hibbert did. <laughs> that's it. It's like Roy Hibbert was a good player, um, and he had self esteem issues. They signed Andrew Bynum, that sort of messed with yeah. his head, all that stuff with Paul George messed with his head. But, I mean, he just lost confidence. That's literally the only two things stopping Sabonis from getting yeah. better. Well, That's it. The worst move the Pacers ever made was signing Evan Turner. That's it was, tra- it was in- trading Danny Granger. Yeah. yeah. yeah the Danny Danny Danger, Danger, the team Danny didn't Evan want him to be traded. That just effed up. Yeah. Their whole team came in straight and, and, Steven- and then Lance Stevenson fought Evan Turner before the first game of the playoffs. <laughs> I, I'm all for it. Man. Man. Stand out for what he believes in. He did. I love Lance Davis. <laughs> I just like when Lance Davis didn't even play, and he's on the bench talking shit to LeBron when they're playing. Oh, that's so great, man. Nobody even knew who he was. Well, it's like him blowing in his ear. That's still shown on, like... That's so funny. But, yeah. like, that's still shown on, yeah. on and stuff. Like, he, he'll he go down forever oh, as the yeah. guy that got under LeBron's skin. Like, he's locked in, in NBA history now. Yes. Like, he has a spot there now. Every, every Pacers fan watching that game remembers that moment. Yeah, I can't wait for the... The Last Dance LeBron documentary where I can just watch them in the 2013, oh, 2014 playoff oh. Eastern Conference Finals. It just Lance so, Stevenson's interviews are going to be hilarious. Oh, Dude, amazing. They started yeah. out, so like 2012-13, that's when they first got going, and that's when Paul George came out as a great player, and they pushed him to seven games. Then 2013-14, they started out 33-7, and seven, yeah, I know. and yeah. they were on pace for crazy. 70 wins. They they yeah. Then the Bynum stuff happened and the Danny Granger stuff, and their record... You know, sort of spittled, yeah, piddled out. Yeah. Still ended up the one seed. Yeah. Got to the f- oh, dude, those two series yeah. were amazing. Lost in Game Six, I think, of um, the Eastern Conference. Finals. And what was good about those two years was the the series leading up to them were good because we played. They played the Knicks both years in the playoffs mm-hmm. against those Carmelo teams. Great series. Yeah. Hawks, Hawksy with Josh Smith. Great series. Yeah. Uh, the Wizards, dude, Gortat. Wall. I remember Dude, I remember him tearing us up. Dude, Gortat yeah. tore us up. Yeah. Nene yeah. tore us up. They were good. Dude, dude, yeah. They were. They were when they had, it was when it was a fresh John Wall. Pretty yeah, Bradley Beal played then. It was like twenty four. Yeah. yeah. And the Pacers yeah. had to go through the Hawks with Jeff Teague and Paul Millsap and all that yeah. shit. Good no, team. They were yeah. great. But like the I remember yeah, Gortat tore up the Pacers. What was years. that Hawks' big guy's name that played for him? Um Helford? No, he was this, <laughs> this tall, like, foreign white dude. He had bald beard. Untich. Pero Untich. Untich, yeah. He was a sniper, yes. man. He could stroke it. Yes. Dude, yeah. No, I just remember, I went to the Pacers Heat Series, like, I think I went to Game 5 in 2012. I just remember my least favorite Pacers player of all time, Lou Amundsen. Louis, got, Louis Amundsen? Yeah, I'm alright with him. He that, <laughs> dude, he got three charges that game. I was just screaming at him from the freaking bleachers up there. <laughs> the freaking cheap seats. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like 10 no, I was 12 was like, I hated that guy so much I think CJ Watson was the backup point guard know, yeah. then they didn't play Chris Copeland the best pacer of all time that's a shame but dude I think back George Hill Lance Stevenson Paul George David what? David <laughs> yeah. David yeah. the enforcer yeah. West yeah. Roy he Hibbert the team yeah. together. he was awesome they, that dude, that Pacers team deserves a documentary. Mid range free throw line fade away for David West. Dude, they were they <laughs> were the missed. they were the biggest threat to the Heat era LeBron. Yeah. Literally the bet like yeah what say what you want. I think the best LeBron has ever been is when he played for the Heat. I mean, yeah. yeah, probably. I mean, besides the last couple championships, I mean, he was just when he was the bad guy, he was so yeah. I, I I I remember just screaming at the TV. Watching LeBron on the Well, he'd do that horse shit where he'd get to the top of the. He'd get off to like the sort of the wing and be three feet behind the line and he'd hold the ball the entire shot clock and just go. (laughs) And he'd three, just go down the court and just. His hairline's here and he's just pissed off. A couple nights with the Warriors and Lakers team, like he did the same crap, you know, where he had the ball. (laughs) Dude, he's so good. Like two seconds, like drills it. They put the Lakers up three to win the game. Like, oh my gosh. That's this vintage heat level. I'm like. (laughs) 
<laughs> did that, no, that, that picture where he's like pissed off. It's like evil yeah. LeBron where he's like looking up at the camera. Yeah. Dude, you can't beat that. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. To finish up, I just want to talk about one more, one more thing. I tell Isaac that I like that, you know, this is stupid. But like, the NBA is a big storybook. Mm-hmm. It's like a big yeah. story. I love that about it. So. So it's like the true NBA started with Magic and Larry, yeah. you know, the golden age of the NBA. And then I like to think that that era of the NBA ended when Michael Jordan hit that final shot against the Jazz. Like, yeah. bam. Mm-hmm. That ended it. That was the yeah. end of that. And then it started Kobe's. Then it started Kobe's. And then I think that era ended when the Mavericks won in 2011. Because, yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, mm-hmm. Jason. it was like Jason Terry and Jason Kidd and Dirk. They were all in their mid-30s. Yeah. Sean Marion, Karan Butler. They were all so old. <laughs> but it's like yeah. they were old. But yeah. that was cool because yeah. it was just all these old, great and players from beat, that era. The and they yeah. beat one of the most hyped teams of all time in mm-hmm. their first year. Yeah. And then that was the beginning of the super, super, like the super team. Mm-hmm. And so from there until now, um, I think I, pretty much until LeBron retires is this current era. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I love that about the NBA because it's just always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's continuous. It's just continuous. Yeah. I love. I don't know. I mean, everything continues, but it just feels like it's. Yeah, they just keep adding new chapters. Yeah. That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. Like I told Isaac, it's like in Return of the Jedi when uh, Vader, <laughs> Vader when Vader when Vader kills when Vader kills the Emperor and throws him. I just think of Michael Jordan hitting that shot against the Jazz. It's the same. It feels the same. Like it's yeah. like that shot. He should have retired. Just be done. Don't come back yeah. play for the Wizards. The final shot of your yeah. career is it's, sealing it. It's, it's, it's because he threw all his money gambling. <laughs> I'm not getting into that. God. <laughs> I'm not getting into that. Yeah. But just like I don't believe that either. But it's funny to, to think about. It's not true. But just him. <laughs> but just him. It wasn't. It wasn't some big crazy shot. The thing is, it wasn't even a buzzer beater. It was a five seconds left, just a yeah. cross up. He didn't push him, even if he. Even it if was he did, going that way. it was already going that yeah. way. He was falling down regardless. Mm-hmm. But just to him, called he, in today's NBA though. For yeah, they're soft. NBA yeah. referees are the worst at any level of basketball, and I will take that to my grave. Definitely, <laughs> they are. They are. The, the, the amount of crap charges they call, and they just call technical foul for nothing. Run in and undercut a guy before he shoots. Slip. Like first off, so, bullshit threes. Do away with the charge call. <laughs> do away with it. Do away with the charge call. Unless, unless, unless it's a push off, like a clear push off. Yeah, if they, if they do, do away, do away with the charge, Russell Westbrook would be the best player in the league hands down. Oh yeah. Like, guys should not be able to sustain the lane and just take a hit. Like, no, block the block the MF or, or foul. Him. Like, come on. Oh, man. No, Westbrook coming with a full ass team. No charges, man. That guy would drop 60 every night. Oh, I hope so. Well, LeBron does that already. He, does, <laughs> he just does. He just gets yeah. fouled every time and no. they don't call it. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Le- LeBron having 17 seasons of 25-plus points per game and Kobe and um, MJ only have 12. That's all right. <laughs> Hey, you gotta take into account MJ didn't play as long. Well, hey, okay? hey, I'm gonna show him the facts. Here. Hey, okay. you have to also consider that MJ averaged like 35 a game one year, smoking cigars and beer after every and, game. And, and I think MJ is the oldest scoring title. With I think he was 35 yeah. when, when, when he won a scoring title. Because Curry's since then, Curry's been the oldest to win scoring title. I think Curry's like 32. I just like, like that. that he was like won the final title when he's 35, and yeah. that might have been the best season he ever had. And, he's <laughs> and he was literally averaging like 28 a game when he came to the league, like his rookie season. <laughs> yeah, his teams were booty until yeah. like Charles Oakley did until the late 80s because Michael Jordan just couldn't play with teammates. Yeah, they had like Craig Hodges <laughs> no, and that, Charles yeah. Oakley. Yeah, <laughs> he but they, with they, what was the guy? Um, he coached the Sixers a while back. Doug something. Doug Collins. Doug. Doug yeah. yeah. They said how they just catered to Michael, and Phil Jackson came in and said, "We can't do that. You're <laughs> yeah, not gonna yeah, win." Yeah. And Michael's like, "I just step back and realize it can't just be me. It's like, <laughs> like, I can't average 35 every game. It's okay. I want to. It's pretty sad. He had to be an NBA player for some of the time. That hashtag yeah. Team LeBron. <laughs> team team LeBron. Oh team LeBron. God. <laughs> That's why it was Kobe. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should remember Kobe over here. Hey, he's got my Bogdan hey, hey, jersey. He's a real goat. So <laughs> oh, I love Bogey. Oh, he's on the I forgot. He's on the Jazz. Yeah, That's another thing. Did you guys see how Tony Snell joined the 50-50-90 club this season? 50-50-90? Yeah. He shot, 50, he shot 50% from three. Yeah. But, well, First player ever. Well, like, and, he, and he had like the minimum 100 yeah, shots. Yeah, he, barely, he barely had 100. So actually he made it. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it on Twitter. <laughs> and he only shot like six or seven free throws maybe. Hey, that, that's my season. My JV season <laughs> like, right there. Like, he barely, barely, I think, I don't think he shot more than 10 free throws. 
Oh, I saw. I, I guess. <laughs> I get on, on on Reddit. They talked about like giving these fake awards, and one of them's like the Tony Snell Award, and it's just like ga- most games with zero, 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 zero just no stat. Like you play multiple minutes, and you get no statistics. <laughs> it's like it's Tony Star- Snell will play like fifteen minutes a game and just do no, nothing. There's one game he had twenty on a minutes, zero stats. <laughs> <laughs> just pulling a Tony Snell. Snell. <laughs> At least get a foul or something. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, yesterday it was I think it was the third quarter of the Pacers game. It said the Pacers have shot three free throws tonight. <laughs> yeah, dude. Once they got down twenty to the third quarter, Mike, you know what? So bonus is gonna get his triple double and we're gonna get a good draft pick. I'll turn it off. <laughs> and the Wizards putting up one fifty. Yeah. All right. Well, we're about an hour, so I think that's good. Uh thanks guys for coming by. It was a lot of fun talking yeah. to the NBA. Mm-hmm. Playoffs start tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I am super excited for it. Let's go. All right. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thank you.